So now we're going to look at a very common interview question. And it may not be exactly like this, but it'll be some variation of what I'm about to show here. So I'm going to bring up two arrays. And our objective is to write a formula that returns true or false as to whether these two arrays have any items in common. And you can see that last item, number five, they have that in common. And we're just going to assume these arrays are the same length. And let's just walk through how we would do this if we were just using for loops. So we'd have a for loop for that first array that starts with the first number, and then a nested for loop that goes to the second array that checks to see, does that match? Does that match? Does that match? And if none of these match, we go to the next number in the top array, like that, and do the same thing on the bottom array. And then we move again on the top array and move through the array on the bottom. And then in this case, we find this matching number and we return true. But because this has nested for loops, this is going to be O of n squared. That is very inefficient. And so let's just quickly walk through the code of doing it this way. This should be pretty simple by now. We'll have a function, we'll call it item in common, and we will pass it each of these arrays. And we'll have a for loop that goes through the first array, a nested for loop that goes through the second array. And if at any time these match, we'll return true. Otherwise, if we go through these for loops and don't find any matches, we'll return false. So let's just flip over to Chrome DevTools and take a look at this. So there is the function we just wrote. These are the two arrays, and we will run the function here. So when I run this, we'll either get true or false. And we'd expect true because we have those two fives that are items in common. So I'll run this, and sure enough, that is true. And then on array two, I'm gonna change that five to a six. And then I'll run this again, and we get false. So this works, it's just not super efficient. Okay, so now let's flip back. So this is where we left off here, but there's a more efficient way to do that, and that is with an object. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna loop through that first for loop, and each of these numbers, one, we will add this to the object, that's the key, with a value of true. And we'll do that for the next item in the array, set that to true, and the next item in the array, and we'll set that to true. So now what we can do is just loop through the second array and say is two in this object as a key. And that is an O of one operation. And then we can check the number four and then check the number five and it's finally gonna come back true. But the difference here is that the number of operations is far less. We went through each array one time only. So you could say that that's O of two in, but of course we drop constants, which makes this O of n, which is much more efficient than O of n squared. So the interview question is not so much about can you write code to make this work, it's really about can you write code that is more efficient. So now let's look at coding this using an object. So we'll create an object like this, just an empty object, then our first for loop is going to loop through the first array just like we did last time. But instead of the nested for loop, we're just gonna move all those values from the array into that object. Then we'll have a second for loop. Now the for loops are one after the other instead of one inside of the other. And then we just check to see if any item in that second array matches an item in that object. And if it does, we'll return true. And then if it doesn't, we return false. Okay, so now let's flip over to DevTools. And there is our new function that uses the object. It has the same name, you're passing it the same arguments. We will use the same arrays here, and we will call the function here. So when I 
run this, we should get true. So that works all the same way. That if I come up and change this second array to be 246, now when we run the code, it returns false. So these functions are going to do exactly the same thing. But can you make it efficient is the real interview question.